September 1998. Before we get into the books that I read in September of 1998, we're going to take a little peek behind the curtain uh, because I'm doing something a little different. Normally, I record on Saturdays. Right now, it's Sunday morning. Uh, but when I prepare for these videos, I get out my three-wing binder here. You can see it says 1985 to 2004. This is where I have all of my books written down that I have read. Uh, so I get this out, and I get out my little notebook here. It's all beat up and falling apart. You can see uh, it's still got the little elastic band, but it's not very tight. The uh, bookmark, the little ribbon bookmark, has fallen out. But in here, in the back, I write down uh, my book reviews as I record them, and then I check them off as I post them. And then here towards the front, I make notes on these Reading Remembrances videos. So... I get out my notebook, I go to the month and the year that I'm going to record for. The first thing I do is pull out uh, any books that I have. Uh, if it's relatively easy for me to get to them, some stuff is buried, I don't pull those out, but if I can get to it... Uh, Easily or just by moving a few things, I'll, I'll pull the books out that I physically have and I read the back cover copy or the inside flap uh, copy to remind me of what the book is because I don't remember a lot of this stuff. We're talking 1998. Then I go through the list and I go on Amazon and Goodreads or wherever I need to go to look up a synopsis of the book. And, uh, again, just to remind me so I can share that with you. And I'll make some vague notes, just little things to trigger something in my head. But a lot of stuff I don't make any notes for. Uh, because as soon as I'm done making any notes or going over these things, then I record the video. But yesterday, after I did all of this... I ended up getting interrupted. I went and played a game, a little DC deck building, um, Forever Evil, I believe is the name of the version that we played. Uh, and when we got done with the game, I decided I just didn't feel like recording. So I decided to wait until today and not refresh my memory. So we're going to see how well I remember the things that I looked up yesterday. I only put down notes on two things. And uh, there's a pretty big list, relatively speaking, of books that I read in September 1998. So we're going to see how this goes. Uh, and we'll get started. So the first book that I read in September of 1998 was X-Men... Prisoner X by Anne Nocenti. And this book is about uh, the X-Men friend. I don't know if he's ever officially been on the team, uh, but the character Longshot, which is a character that I love. Uh, Longshot has been captured by his longtime nemesis, Mojo. They're from another dimension. And... Mojo has put Longshot in this prison where they record, or I don't know that they record, well, I assume they record, uh, but broadcast executions as entertainment. Mojo's all about um, television. But uh, so the X Men have to break into this prison and save Longshot and stop Mojo. And from what I read in the reviews and things, uh, this is really sort of an indictment on the death penalty. At least a number of reviews mentioned that. Some of them were like, this is a great book, but if you're political and if you're pro-death penalty, you're not going to like it. 
Uh, but as much as I'm not a huge, huge X-Men fan, I do love the character of Longshot. Uh, it's, I've, for years and years and years, convinced people that that was my middle name because my middle initial is L. People would ask what it stands for. I'd tell them it was Longshot. Uh, fun character. Decent book. And now we turn the page. Next up, we have Drawing Blood by Poppy Z. Bright. This is one that I have notes for, which is just a couple of names, character names. So, 20 years ago, uh, this man kills his family, except for his five-year-old son. He, I think he drugs him, but he doesn't kill him. He kills the rest of his family and then kills himself. Uh, that son is Trevor McGee. And so now, present day, 20 years later, he's returned to his family home to try to figure out what caused his father to go crazy and kill the rest of his family. Meanwhile, you have Zachary Bosch, who has run away uh, from an abusive family. He's a hacker, finds out the government's after him, so he goes on the run, meets Trevor McGee. They fall in love, and... Crazy things happen in this haunted house, multi-dimensional house, weird stuff, <clears throat> and lots of gay sex. Um, and I believe this was printed by Del Abyss, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but Poppy Z. Bright, currently known, I believe, as Billy Martin, but still publishing under the name Poppy Z. Bright. Then we have Sudden Mischief by Robert B. Parker. This is a Spencer novel. Uh, and Susan Silverman, Spencer's love, uh, asks Spencer to help with her ex-husband, who's always been a shady character, but now he's in some kind of trouble. And so she asks Spencer to help him out. And this is actually, from what I saw on Amazon, this is about the halfway point. It said this is book 25 out of 51. And probably one of the last ones that I've read. I think we're getting to the point where I stopped reading them. Uh, but it's a Spencer book. So, you know, it's got to be, at the very least, pretty good. Don't remember if it was great. But Robert B. Parker, great author. Spencer books are usually really good. Then we have Lucky You by Carl Hyacin. And this is about a this woman so down in Florida. This woman wins the lottery, $14 million. But these white supremacists also win. So I guess they're going to get $7 million each. Uh, but the white supremacists decide that's not enough, so they assault the woman who won and steal her lottery ticket. She teams up with a reporter to try to get it back. The reporter's having an affair with a judge's wife. There's all sorts of craziness going on. The usual Carl Hyacin, Florida craziness with some white supremacists thrown in. Um... Hyacin books are usually pretty funny. I don't remember too much about this. I think I'm doing pretty well so far <laughs> with remembering what I read yesterday. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Safe House by Andrew Vax. This is one of the book, Burke books, excuse me. And it has to do with stalking. And there's a, a network that helps the victims of stalkers but one of the people that is part of that network goes a little too far and kills a stalker and so burke is brought in to help figure things out and the there's a bad guy who's blackmailing threatening this safe house and this network uh because they want one of these women that's in the safe house kicked out basically so they can get to them. Burke has to figure out how to save the safe house, stop the bad guys. 
again, good stuff. Andrew Vax, the, the Burke books especially, fantastic. Hard-boiled, dark. Uh, Andrew Vax had a great writing style. There's a lot of short sentences, um, which is very punchy. Safe House by Andrew Vax. Then we, we're back to Poppy Z. Bright, An Exquisite Corpse. And this one is possibly the first book that I ever read that was labeled extreme. I've been reading splatterpunk authors ever since splatterpunk was a thing. But then you also have the extreme horror and I think this was the first one that I read. It's about a serial killer and who meets up with another serial killer and they partner up and they're obsessed with this Vietnamese boy. They kill, they kidnap, torture, and kill young boys. And now they, and they were doing it individually, but now they're teamed up and they have their sights set on this young Vietnamese boy. Um... I think by today's standards, if you're into extreme horror, I don't recall, I don't think that this would be considered that extreme compared to a lot of other authors. I do believe I remember what I considered the most extreme scene involved a screwdriver, if I am remembering this correctly. And if anybody out there has read this book and remembers it, let me know. If you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. Um, a book that I, I would like to reread to see how I would compare it to today's extreme horror. Then we have Helm by Stephen Gould. The only other note that I have made, and it's just a single name. Uh, Stephen Gould, author of Jumper... And the other one that I can never remember the name of, about the barn that has a portal back in time. Uh, loved that book, loved Jumper. Wasn't a huge fan of Helm. This is sort of a science fiction fantasy mix because it's a, it takes place on another planet. Uh, Earth had colonized the moon, things are falling apart. Humans move to another planet. The main character here is Leland. And what happened was, back in the day, they basically wanted to restart humanity, and they made these devices that would implant a certain amount of knowledge into the people that were going to colonize this planet, and then they would be able to use that knowledge and extrapolate and rebuild society, if I remember correctly. But Leland gets a hold of this crystal helm that contains all human knowledge. He puts it on and he gets all human knowledge poured into his brain. So now he's got voices in his head and there's his Leland's father is the, the baron or the king or the leader of where they're at and uh, the they're about to go to war with somebody else, and Leland's fallen in love with somebody. And so there's just all this stuff, but Leland kind of has superpowers, if you wanted to look at it that way. Um, like I said, it did not hit me the way that Jumper and the other book did. Uh, so not one I would go back to. What are you going to do? Next, The Ultimate Hulk, edited. Did you hear that? little phlegmy crack in my voice. The Ultimate Hulk, edited by Stan Lee and Peter David. An anthology collection of a bunch of stories throughout the entire history of the Hulk from way back in the day when he was an inarticulate savage, as it said in the one description I read, to Professor Hulk, uh, one of my favorite iterations of the Hulk, and I believe into the There Might Be Some Maestro future imperfect stuff. Um, but a decent book. I wish I had a copy of it. I have, I think, three of the ultimate uh, anthologies that came out. I'll have to find a copy of this one. 
All right, this one, I do not know how to pronounce everything here. It is Picasso at the Lapin Agile, Agile, I don't know. Uh, Picasso at the Lapin Agile and other plays by Steve Martin. And the main one, the Picasso one, is basically about a young Picasso, 20s, and a young Einstein meeting and talking. Just talking about everything. And then there are three one-act plays about various things. Uh, I'm a big fan of Steve Martin's comedy. I used to have a couple of his comedy albums way back in the day. Uh, I still recite some of the jokes. I believe that a certain number, there's, there's a number that I use a lot of times. If I'm exaggerating about something, uh, if somebody asks for, you know, how many eggs in this basket? I'll just say this number because I have no idea how many eggs are in that basket. <laughs> um, and I realized one day, I think maybe the reason that number has always stuck in my head and it's always the one that just pops up when I need a random number is from a Steve Martin joke. Uh, but anyway, so why not read four plays written by Steve Martin? And the, the Picasso Einstein thing really sounds interesting. I don't remember how I felt about it, but it, I feel like, again, this is something I might want to reread just uh, to see about that whole Einstein and Picasso hanging out. I followed that up with Ranting Again by Dennis Miller, a comedian who went insane. Not literally. Well, I guess it depends on <laughs> what you consider insanity. Um, but I used to find him incredibly funny back in the day. And I thought that his books uh, were pretty funny. Now he's like a crazy conservative. But back then, funny stuff. Next up, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Child of the Hunt by Christopher Golden and Nancy Holder. In this one, Buffy and the gang go to a Renaissance fair and... They don't realize at the time that it's all run. Everybody at the Renaissance Fair are like dark fairies. Uh, but they meet the the jester, I think it is. Um, and it seems like he's being held prisoner. And so he they take him away. But now the wild hunt is after him. And they have to deal with that. And there's this weird portal. Uh, Angel and Oz are in this. It takes place during season three when Angel's still Angel and Oz and Willow are still a couple. But whenever Angel and Oz get near this portal, it sort of brings out, it brings out the vampire and Angel. It brings out the werewolf in Oz. Um, but Buffy and the gang have to deal with the wild hunt, which is a, <coughs> excuse me, would that be folklore? I suppose. Uh, I've read a number of fictional things that deal with the whole wild hunt. Um, and usually the main, the leader of the hunt has antlers and there's horrible devil dog type things. And, uh, but it's some Buffy the Vampire Slayer stuff. It's Christopher Golden and Nancy Holder. Um, it's entertaining. The one book that I do have Rumble Tumble by Joe R. Lansdale, a Happen Leonard novel with a little armadillo on the cover. Uh, so Happen Leonard, best friends, Hap, white, liberal, middle-aged guy who went to Canada instead of being drafted for Vietnam. Leonard, black, gay, conservative, went to Vietnam. Best friends. And Hap having kind of a midlife crisis. He's working as a bouncer. Um, but he does have a girlfriend whose name is, let's take a look, Brett Sawyer. And so in this story, uh, Brett's daughter is doing drugs and turning tricks. And Brett asks Hap for help. And so Hap and Leonard go on essentially a road trip. 
uh, with Brett, I assume, uh, to rescue Brett's daughter from this bad life. And they meet crazy characters along the way, as often happens in Joe Lansdale books. It's Joe Lansdale. It's Happen Leonard. It's fantastic. Everybody in the world should read it. All right, two more books. So the penultimate is Spider-Man Wanted Dead or Alive by Craig Shaw Gardner. You have this guy running for mayor, and he's running on an anti-superhero campaign, and he's very, very against Spider-Man, uh, and Spider-Man ends up framed for murder. It turns out this guy running for mayor is in the pocket of somebody else who wants to run all of the crime in New York, and so Peter Parker, you know, Spider-Man, has to figure out what's going on, put a stop to this, and clear his name, while Electro and the Rhino are after him, the cops are after him. Um, I like Craig Shaw Gardner, great writer, fun Spider-Man book. I also like the Rhino, and Electro, he's fine. Uh, and then the final book that I read in September of 1998 is Pawn of Prophecy, by David Eddings. It is the first book in the Belgariad. I believe it's the Belgariad. A sweeping five-book fantasy story, not as dense as Lord of the Rings, not as light as, say, some Dungeons & Dragons novel or something like that. Uh, but it is a sweeping, epic hero's journey, chosen one. Uh, this is the one that I really don't remember much about what I read yesterday. I don't remember the characters' names or anything, just that there's an ancient evil that's going to be awakened, and our hero has to go on, again, the hero's journey and save their world. Uh, but I did like, I read these back in... 1985, perhaps started even before that. I flipped all the way to the front of my book. And I know David Eddings is here somewhere. Magician's Gambit. Maybe I started them in 84. Either way, that's neither here nor there. Um, despite the fact that I've I fell off of reading fantasy. Uh, I recall these being pretty good books. And that is it. That is everything that I read in September of 1998. Now, I actually thought of a question ahead of time. And it has to do with all of this sort of behind the scenes, how I do these things. Uh, and that is basically, for those of you who do watch these videos, um... How interested in are you in the details of each book? I'm, I'm not reviewing them. I do obviously say, hey, I really enjoyed this, or, you know, this is, it was fine. It's not something I would ever reread. Um, but I do try to, you know, make some notes. I don't think necessarily the characters' names are super important, but maybe they're important to you. How much information do you want for the books that I'm talking about? Now, please share your opinions. That doesn't mean I'm going to change anything that I do, uh, but I am interested to know. And maybe I will get a little more detail. I don't want these videos to be super long, and this one's already running at 24 minutes of recording. Um, but there were a lot of books as well. Uh, so let me know... If, if there's if you want more information if you want less information um, just uh, share your opinion please down in the comments below and if you have any other comments questions or corrections please put those in the comments below comments are open for spoilers just post spoiler warning we try to be polite here on my channel uh, please like share and subscribe all the usual YouTube stuff if you'd care to follow me on other social media, as of this recording, still on Twitter. I'm going to stay there as long as authors I follow are there making announcements. 
Um, but my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That is all I have for you this week. So until next week, read more books.